So this is one of the most common question asked by any aspirant who is applying for a PhD program. How to choose a lab? When choosing a lab, what factor we should look at? And what is the selection criteria for a lab? What is the rejection criteria for the lab? In this video, we are going to break it down and I'll tell you that what criteria you should keep in your mind while hopping a lab. Lab hopping is not an easy job and it's going to change your life for the next five years. So that is why you have to put your effort in terms of selecting the lab. It can make your life like a paradise or also it can change your life like a hell. So that is why stay tuned and watch it till the end. Okay, so first of all, one of the biggest mistake that is done by the youngster is the institutional tag. People think, okay, I would go to the institute. This institute has huge name in India or abroad. And okay, doesn't matter which lab it is. And I would choose the institute for my PhD. No, my friend, this is not a good idea. Because sometime, if you go to a particular institute which has a big name and you don't get a lab of your choice or get a particular project that interests you, you are not going to sustain for five long years doing that same project. A little bit of love for the project is important. There are a lot of other factors, but if you love your project, if you are comfortable with your project, if the project interests you, chances are you would do great with that particular project. That is why choose a lab based on the research work. That brings me to background check. So obviously when you search for lab, obviously re read the research proposal that is provided in their websites. Check out their publication that how much they have kind of like proposed in their research proposals and how much they have achieved. So believe me or not, publication is the criteria right now to judge uh, academicians progress, right? It might not be fair, but this is the way it is. So anyway, you have to look how consistently that the lab is publishing. Because at the end of the day, when once you finish your PhD, if you don't have a publication, believe me on this, applying to postdocs, applying to jobs would be super, super difficult. Again, another thing is like, okay, there are many labs which are like work like a factory. There are so many workers in the factory work. They contribute to specific angles of a project and a big publication comes out. So think again, think twice before joining those kind of lab, because in that case, you might be getting publication, but you don't have too much of learning experience. Besides getting publications and improvising your CV, you also need to learn stuff during your PhD, right? So this is another criteria. Third thing, Let's say the lab is very nice. Let's say the PI is very nice. Lab environment is nice, but the funding is low. That is the absolute no-no situation to join a lab. You have to understand and you have to back, do a good background check on the lab's funding. If the lab is only funded, fu funded by the institutional funds, then put a question mark before joining that particular lab because biological research requires a lot of money. And if you don't have money, how would you order your reagents? Then you just, basically your interest would not drive the experiments. Then the availability of reagents and Sasta reagent would drive your experiments. It's going to be detrimental, believe me on that. Okay, next thing is basically the lab environment. Let's say the PI is very nice, but the lab people are toxic. That is going to hurt you. Because if you don't have a productive environment which is free of hierarchy and you don't feel like kind of like free in that state, creative thoughts would not come in your brain. Even if creative thoughts come in your brain in order to basically uh, make them into action, you need that freedom. You need that comfort to be uncomfortable in your PhD. So always look for that criteria the lab environment, the toxicity in the lab, the hierarchy situations in the lab, etc. Then another point is how toxic is the PI? It's also possible in vice versa that the lab is very good, but the PI is toxic. So what do I mean by toxic? 
don't take it in other terms but sometimes what happens is PIs tend to prefer students who are highly productive I think that is one of the sort of like uh, biasness or one sort of sign of toxicity because there might be some person who is not at its uh, at his best or her best situation right now but the PI's job is to kind of push that person and stay with them in their difficult moments so that is why don't look for a PI or a professor or advisor look for a mentor who can be with you both uh, from a scientific and non-scientific aspect in your and, and can guide you and help you to navigate through your difficult times because believe me in this five years or six years of your PhD there would be different different scenarios when you would feel absolutely low you would want you, you would want that you should quit the program and finish this but you need a PI who can help you to decide and choose better so that is why you need a mentor Fourth and last thing is basically while selecting a lab, look for how uh, old that lab is. If that is a new lab, then it could also be a concern because sometimes what happens if the PI doesn't get the tenure and uh, the PI was in the third uh, year of their particular tenureship and uh, tenure track position and then you joined. So in two years, he didn't get tenure or she didn't get tenure then you have to juggle between different institutes that is again a big problem that is why you have to first understand whether the PI has tenure or not and ultimately what really matters is whether you are comfortable in that institutional environment you have friends there you have uh, some amount of comfort in that particular environment if all these criteria are fulfilled then I think you should choose that lab so I hope this video was useful and eye-opening. If you like this video, please share with your friends. I am sure that you are going to uh, start lab hopping very soon and see you in the next video.